What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Keith. Today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to install Crossmix OS on a TrimUI Smart Pro. So we'll head over to the computer and we'll have a look now. So this is the place or the screen that we need to be at. This is the Crossmix OS on GitHub and it should bring this up and this is what we're gonna do. So this is the website here. It might look a bit sort of overwhelming to some people, but it's not really. So we'll look here, the Crossmix OS, the, it's an OS which elevates your TrimUI Smart Pro to new heights. It uses a TrimUI stock user interface with refined configurations, new features, new emulators and new apps. There's so much many more differences that Crossmix can be considered a dedicated OS in its own right. Designed with a community in mind, it caters to develop for developers and creators alike. It supports a wide range of customization including themes, icon packs, background packs, templates for best collections and automatic overlay configurations. It's completely free and open source platform. So the thing that I want to install this for is so I can record the screen when I'm playing games. Now there's other features which are built into it which other people may want and need but for me this is what I'm getting it for. So like I said on the page here there's a get started. So if you click on installation this is going to take us to the installation page and it just tells you how to set it up. So we'll sort of go over this and show you how to do it. So to do a fresh install, you need your SD card in FAT32. There's a documentation here for Windows, but I'm on Mac, so the, the things that I'm going to be doing are related to Mac, but you can do them on Windows as well. But this tutorial as such is Mac only. So if you're on a Mac, Mint, if not, then you'll have to sort of look on the website or you should be able to figure it out yourself. It's roughly the same process, i.e. changing the little portable SD card, micro SD card, into FAT32 to use it for that. So obviously for the, the Mac here, it says you need to plug it into the reader. Then we're going to go to Disk Utilities, which you can find in Application, Utilities, Disk Utilities. This is a, a finder on your Mac to show you all your hard drives so you can reset things and stuff like that. So see, we're going to do that just now, but to do this, if you go further down, it says to install the latest version of Crossmix, there should be a link here. So this link takes you back to the main screen, well, it takes you this bit here for the, the install, and then um, if you go fresh install, it'll take you back to this main screen. Then on the right hand side where it says releases, this is what you need to do. It's got the latest release here, so you click on this. And again, this takes you back to the, the main screen that we were already on anyway. You want to scroll all the way to the very bottom. And there's a Crossmix OS. This is a, a version 1.3.0.zip. This is what you need to download. So you click on the zip file. That'll come up. And then obviously allow. And that'll download to your computer. So that's that bit sorted. So next thing we have here is my micro SD card. I've got the 128 Samsung one. So I'm just going to pop this in the computer. So there we go, that goes in the computer. And if we head over to the computer screen, we have this disk utility which is on. And as you can see here, this has come up on the side now called volume one. So this is my micro SD card. It could be untitled, could be no name, could be anything, but that's the SD card that you want to use. So this is it here, and without looking at the instructions and how to do this, because I've done it multiple times, on the top you have arrays. So this will come up now, so Erase Volume 1, and it'll say you want to permanently erase it, and what you need to do is change this to FAT32, so MS-DOS FAT32. So we'll click on Erase, make sure it's FAT32, click the button to erase it, and that should go through and erase that micro SD card for you, and that is in FAT32 format. So it's just unmounted the disk, it's going to erase it, and then it's going to mount it again, and then that's it done. So there we go, I've come back and this is done now. So that's it completed. And I'm just gonna trim UI, just gonna give it a, a rename just so I know that's that micro SD card. So again, this should be downloading now. And yeah, so this is nearly downloaded, it's got 60 seconds left. So we're gonna fast forward and show you what's done after this has been downloaded. So this has been downloaded, but what I'm going to do now is just copy the file from downloads onto the micro SD card itself. So the way 
best way to do it is when you're extracting the zip, you could extract it from your downloads and it would just load it into your downloads and you have to copy and paste everything from there. But obviously as it's a zip file, it's a compressed format. So the file size of the zip file is much smaller than the actual files and folders that you're going to be doing anyway. So you copy this onto the micro SD card and when that's done, you will then double click or open or extract the zip into the SD card. And then all of those files will sort of appear in that rather than on your computer and then having to copy them. It's just a bit quicker this way. So while this is copying across, what I'm going to do is connect my Trim UI Smart Pro to the computer because what we need to do is copy some BIOS files and obviously all of the, the ROMs and stuff like that onto the new SD card or micro SD card. So the best way to do it, if you don't have multiple SD card readers, you can just sort of connect it to the, the Trim UI versus the, the port on here. Like normally you just pull this out, put it in the computer and stuff like that. But you can actually use the USB storage built in on here. So when you have USB storage, you press the button. As you can see, that's gone into the USB storage. Now the port in the bottom here, you put a micro, not a micro, USB-C even. Got new technology now, USB-C. So that goes in there and then you connect the other side of the cable to the computer and that should show up as a sort of a portable storage hard drive. So as you can see here, I'm just going to plug this in. There's also an option if you did not get a SD card with your Trim UI Smart Pro, there's the option to um, download the BIOS files from another link which was on GitHub as well. So if you need that, the link is in the description below. So this is finally getting finished to get transferred across into the SD card. And then what we're going to do is once that's done, we're going to click on it and we're going to extract it. And that should extract all of the files for the Crossmix OS onto the micro SD card. 10 seconds left, five seconds. That's the countdown. So there we go. That's now copied onto the micro SD. So we'll double click on this. So this has opened up the archive utility and this is extracting all of the files into the, the folder. Okay, so that's copied across now and now I've copied the BIOS files from the, the BIOS. So what you need to do is go into the BIOS folder on the new sort of micro SD and then from there just want to paste them in. So then all of those BIOS will get pasted in the BIOS folder and you're good to go. So there we go, that's all of them copying across now. So we'll just speed up the video and get to the point where all of that's done. So we've done the BIOS things now and what we have to do now is copy the ROMs into the ROMs folder. So if you notice here on the screen, there's some path changes for certain devices. So the PSP, that's been changed and the, the PICO to PICO 8. Certain things like that. So you have to be careful when you're copying the ROMs just to make sure you get them in the correct folders. But like I says, there's a Crossmix emulator list with all of the correct folders and file names, so that's all you need. But yeah, that's it. Um, so we go back into the main Trim UI bit, and there's a thing here for ROMs. So you go into the ROMs, and then it's just a case of copying the other ones. So like the Atari 2600, that's already in there, so I'll just replace that. Uh, the 7800, that's in there, so that'll replace that and so on and so forth, just adding all your ROMs into the correct folders. So I've just set some of the ROMs downloading across from the backup of the original Trim UI Smart Pro onto this one. I've gone from like sort of A arcade up to the GW just so I can have a, a good amount of ROMs on the Crossmix OS just for when I install it so I've already got those ROMs on there because obviously I'm going to have to connect it back up and copy all the other ROMs that I've got and like the ones like the, the PlayStation, the PSP, the N64, they're all quite large file size so they take a while but just for the benefit of this video I'll just put these on so these are like 20 gigabytes if that so we'll catch up in a bit. So there we go that's it done so we take the device take the uh, micro SD card just going to push that in there like that. And then all we have to do, turn it on. Then you see there's got the uh, Trim UI loading screen. Installing it. 
So it normally says that it takes a bit longer when you first turn it on because the um, it's loading up components like Portmaster and stuff like that, but it's just going to go through and install the Crossmix OS. So there we go, Crossmix OS version 1.3.0. So this is doing the 16 millisecond polling rate. And there we go. That is now loaded up. So there we go, that's a Crossmix OS installed, as you can see there. I've just gone into settings just to, to double check it and it's just building up the menu. But yeah, that's how easy it is to install the Crossmix OS on the Trim UI Smart Pro. Like I said, the longest time is spent waiting for the files to copy across and stuff like that, but yeah. So there, and then you've got all your different settings in here. So you've got like the network theme tools. So you can go in, do loads of different things with the uh, the CPU and things like that. And like I said, the main thing that I wanted, if you have a look, is the screen recorder. So I can screen record games on this and upload them onto uh, my YouTube channel. So yeah, having a mess around with this and uh, get onto it. But that's how you install the Crossmix OS onto the device. Hope this helped. If it didn't, let me know in the comments what bit you got stuck on and I'll maybe do a separate video on that just to explain that further or explain in more details. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, there'll be a video coming soon with all of the ROMs which came on the device. There's like a full games list because the one on the Kinhang X5 Pro seemed to do quite well. So I'll do one for this as well. But yeah, until next time. See ya.